Hi. Well, I finally got the call that I have to turn back to the office for work. I have mixed feelings about it because I do think that working in the office is kind of cool and can help with some aspects of teamwork or bonding, but at the same time, I like being able to stay at home and I feel like I am still perfectly capable of completing my tasks at home. I did some modifications to my AK-68 Aurora after saving the R2 parts and to make it a bit more office friendly, so maybe I'll make a video about it next week. Anyways, without further ado.
GMK Tenshi is a set inspired by the anime Angel Beats, which is a huge throwback. It was an anime that aired back in 2010, which is 12 years ago. I really enjoyed watching it back then, but it has been some time since I've last seen it, so I don't know how well it's aged throughout the years. Regardless, I do think that GMK Tenshi looks really cool, and I like the colors chosen for this set. Kidding seems to be pretty basic with GMK Tenshi, as it only includes a LAN Alpha's kit, novelties, and space bars. The base kit does have a decent amount of keys, but it would have been nice if there were some dedicated kits for certain layouts and languages. I don't remember too much about the anime, so I can't say whether the novelties kit is true to the inspiration, but I think that the designs are very cute, and I think that they look great. I read in the geek hack that there's supposed to be a metal artisan in the works, but I haven't seen any pictures of it yet. Hopefully, it'll be ready before the group buy, and the designer can update the thread with the render soon. Now, onto the topic that I'm sure is on everyone's mind. If I do join this group buy, when will I be able to get them? Honestly, I'm not sure, but if I were to take a rough estimate based on historical data, it'll probably take around 1-2 to two years before it reaches your front door. Some of you might be patient and be willing to wait, but I'm sure that there are many of you who would rather avoid this problem. My personal position is somewhat mixed on this, as I'm pretty willing to wait for things, but I also definitely would prefer to get things sooner rather than later. While I might not be a mega fan of this anime, I did really enjoy it and I'm very interested in this set as well. I think it really depends on the price for me, so if it's reasonable, I will probably join the group by myself. Chemistry was originally supposed to go live back in March, but was delayed all the way until now. I don't want to repeat everything I said in the video, so just know that I think that this set is really cool and creative. Key Creative has been having plenty of issues with manufacturing, but since this is a cam set, I don't believe it has the double shot issues that cat sets are facing. Either way, it seems like Key Creative has finally figured out the kinks for manufacturing double shot keycaps as my cat Mizu will hopefully arrive within this year. If you want a chemistry themed set or just one that is super unique, I think that you should definitely consider chemistry. This set is inspired by the Zaku Warrior Gundam, so if you're a big Gundam fan or just like cool robot themed sets, this might just be the keycaps for you. Before you go ahead and just pull the trigger though, there are some things to address regarding this set. I don't know about you, but I've never heard of Aloha KB before, but I think that they're just a designer group because the Geek Hack IC said that the manufacturer would be Heiki which is another company that I've also never heard of before. Although I'm pretty apprehensive whenever there are unknowns in a group buy, what's somewhat comforting to me is that they're working with clickclack.io for this group buy. Clickclack has been pretty responsive with their communication, and I was pretty impressed in how they dealt with the delays for the other keycap group buy, so I'm willing to entrust them with my money. However, I do think that it's always a good idea for you to do your own research whenever you have questions before joining any sale. There was also an in-stock sale in China that has already ended, so I know that there are some pictures of the set floating around. So if you're worried about quality, you can also try searching online. The Warrior MK2 will be die sub rather than double shot, since the designs would be too expensive and complicated to produce in the double shot method. It's not a deal breaker for me personally, but I know that some people are wary of dice up keycaps, so I wanted to point that out. As mentioned before, people have already received their sets from the sale in China, 
So if you're familiar with Chinese keyboard forums, you might be able to track down some reviews or pictures of the set. Personally, I think that the design is really cool, and I've always really liked Gundams. I may not be the most hardcore fan, but how could you not like giant mechs? The price for this set also isn't all that bad, at $79 for the base kit, and all the child kits are under $30, so it's pretty fair. It's not chump change by any means, but it's an amount of money that I'm willing to put down with a bit of risk. If you've been searching for a mecha themed set, or just some really cool red keycaps, I think that this set is definitely worth considering. There's some risk attached to this group buy since they are some unknowns, but if you do your research and feel comfortable with the unknowns, then do take a look at the Warrior MK2. The QK60 is a new 60% keyboard from QWERTY Keys, the subsidiary to OWL Labs. Although it shares the same naming scheme as its bigger brother, the QK65, the QK60 is still different, and now introduces acrylic top cases for a new look. I've stated this a decent number of times before in my videos that I'm not the biggest fan of 60% keyboards due to the lack of dedicated arrow keys, but this keyboard along with the Tiny Neko 60 are really making me question that opinion. I used to think that aluminum was superior and that if I was paying for a keyboard, I'd want to get my money's worth by receiving a metal board. However, I've really come to appreciate the aesthetics that plastic can bring. Ever since I got my polycarbonate Primus, I've really started to like the look that frosted plastic gives and has really changed my opinion about plastic boards as a whole. If you're not a plastic enjoyer though, the QK60 will also have aluminum top frames for a bit more money. The QK60 shares the same draw as the QK65 being that it is very affordable. Prices start at $138 and go up to $155 and offer some really cool features such as a wireless hotspot PCB and a stainless steel weight. It's pretty awesome how QWERTY Keys has been able to make these more affordable keyboards for the community, and I love the fact that the sale will be unlimited, so everyone who wants one won't have to rush. Now, I do know that QWERTY Keys has had issues in the past with delays, but it seems like many of them are outside their control, so I don't really put the blame on them. The problem with Ash Keys wasn't even because of QWERTY Keys, and is instead a customs issue, though I must admit that it does suck a lot that my R1 QK65 still hasn't arrived. I'm sure that there are people who are frustrated by the delays and maybe communication could have been better, but overall, I think that they handled the situation pretty well. If you need a 60% keyboard or are looking for one to suggest to a friend, I think that the QK60 is a great option and one that you should strongly consider. The Minerva is another keyboard inspired by the work of Dieter Rams. Some of you may remember a previous board with the same inspiration the Phase 165, which I guess kind of features similar aesthetics. I wasn't the biggest fan of the Phase 165 because I felt like it didn't really follow the design language of Dieter Rams with many superfluous parts, and the price was quite high. The Minerva also has quite a high price, but I think does look a lot more simplistic and functional, which I believe is more in line with what Dieter Rams was aiming for. I am aware that the nubs on the back of the board don't serve a purpose and are there for purely aesthetic reasons, but I am a fan of how they look. I've heard that extra nubs will be sold later, so you can customize them to your liking, but as of right now, I think that the Ghost, Wisp, Carbon, and Royal have the coolest color combos out the box. The reason I'm drawn to these color options is probably mainly due to the fact that I really like the copper weight, and if I were to join this group by, that would definitely be the option I'd go for. The Minerva is a gasket mount keyboard that uses silicon gasket sleeves to achieve that bouncy feel. The majority of gasket mount keyboards tend to use small silicon or foam strips to provide a cushion, but gasket sleeves have definitely gotten more and more popular as of recent times. It's a pretty nice design because it allows you to more easily change plates if you want to try a different build, since you won't have the problem of accidentally destroying your gaskets. Now, I've mentioned before that the Minerva has quite the high price, and this is true as the starting price for this keyboard is $465 and can go all the way up to $592 depending on what options you select. This pricing makes this a premium board, so I really have to question myself as to whether it's worth it for me to pick up. I am a fan of the sound based on the sound tests that I've heard, and I'm honestly really surprised at how consistent it sounds even with different configurations and builds. I also do really like the design, 
and I really want to pick up a board with a copper weight because I think it'd look really cool. In the end though, I'm probably not going to end up joining this group by because the cost is just a bit too high for my taste. With the current economic status and my place in the hobby, I feel like it's just smarter for me to not pull the trigger on this one. However, if you've been looking for an endgame board or maybe you just missed out on the phase 165 and have been looking for a premium board to pair with EPBT less but better, I think that this might be a board you want to consider.